What's up guys, it's Josh from Soul Studios. I'm excited today to share a quick review of the Stam Audio SA47 Mark II. Now, if you go back several years ago, I did a review where I compared the Mark I SA47 to a Flea 47. And to be honest, I was pretty critical of a lot of things in that video. Basically, every criticism I had of the Mark I version has been addressed from the availability of the mic. They're in stock right now, by the way, which is why I wanted to get this video out quickly for anybody that may want to pick one up while they're still in stock. And the other thing is in that original review, I really liked the low end extension of the stem and actually felt like it reached down a whole octave lower than the flea did on a drum room mic example. But the top end was a little bit too modern in my opinion. And when singing vocals through the Mark I, it didn't have that natural tube compression, that sort of larger than life voice of God thing that a great U47 style mic is known for. So today I'm going to take the song Hallelujah by Jeff Buckley that I did in the Bees Knees BU87 review. We're going to take the guitar track from that. So the guitar that you hear is my divided by 13 RPB 1937, and that is being mic'd with a pair of Bees Knees BU87 mics. It's a divided by 13, 2x12 open back cab, one blue Alnico, and one green back speaker. And then the vocal in this example is the Stam SA47 Mark II and Cardioid. There's no compression, there's no two bus compression, there's no EQ. So on the guitar, and on the mic, all you have is a little bit of reverb, which is me doing my best Andy Wallace impression, blending the PCM-80 on a rich plate setting, PCM-91 on a large chamber, and the PCM-70 on a large hall patch. So again, the only EQ on the guitar and the vocal track is just a high pass filter using the Massenburg EQ plugin around 30 hertz, and that's it. So you're really going to hear what this mic sounds like just tracking with no bells and whistles. The preamp is the Shadow Hills Quad Gamma on the nickel setting, which is about the cleanest preamp I have that still has some character. And I mentioned it in the SA4000 review, but I can't emphasize enough how much improvement I've seen over the last four or five years since I first tried Stam Gear to now. And the build quality, everything has just continued to get better and better. So like I said, I was critical in that first review. And so I, I hope you know that if there are issues with anything I review now, I will continue to tell you. But the new STAM stuff that I'm getting, for one, there's an in-stock tab on the website, which is great for those of us that don't have much patience. And as soon as I grabbed the power supply out of the case when I got this mic, I was like... This is one of the heaviest power supplies I've ever felt for a microphone, which in my experience over the years, weight is usually a good indicator of quality in a lot of music equipment because a lot of the best sounding stuff has really large transformers and components that add quite a bit of weight to it. So that was the first thing I noticed. The second, and I'll show some B-roll as I'm talking about this, is the new Black Stam logo looks great. I much prefer it to the previous red logo. It just really looks classic. And for whatever reason, I think black is just the right color here. The other thing is the screw on connector. It's really nice. It's something you see in the most expensive of mics. And I'm really glad to see that added to the Mark II. Now, one thing to note about that connector, there's a little red dot and there's a corresponding red dot on the microphone. I'll show you in a video clip here. You wanna make sure those two line up when you're connecting. I had that in the wrong spot once and wasn't getting any audio from the mic. So make sure those red dots are lined up and then you've got the correct pins and the correct slots and your SA-47 will be up and running. Let's stop talking here. Let's get into the examples. I know that's what you're here for. So check out the STAM SA-47 Mark II on a quick cover of Hallelujah. Here we go. Your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw a maiden on the roof. Her beauty and the moonlight overthrew you. 
had you to a kitchen chair Broke your throne and cut your hair And from your lips you drew a hallelujah 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 Your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty and the moonlight overthrew you. Died you to a kitchen chair. Broke your throne and cut your hair. And from your lips you drew a hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. All right, guys, there's the STAM SA47 Mark II. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. And I hope it will help you narrow down if you're on the hunt for a new mic to see if this is one you would like to consider. I appreciate you taking the time to check it out. If you will, before you go, like the video, subscribe, ring the bell so you'll know when the next video comes out. Also, if you'll see the link in the description, I'm going to give you the 96K 24-bit files. I'm giving you the song mixed as you heard it here. And then in addition to that, you'll have the dry guitar and the dry vocal and then their corresponding reverbs printed on separate tracks. So you can put those in your own doll and blend, use different effects, EQ, compress the vocal, see how it reacts to that in your own studio. Uh, so my main closing thought is, again, if you're in the hunt for a great vocal mic, between the review I just did of the Bees Knees BU67 and this STAM SA47 Mark II, I'm shocked that you can get vocal mics of this caliber in the... $1,500 price range. I mean, I, I know I probably sound like an old man <laughs> talking like this, but I just can't emphasize enough that those of us that started recording in the 90s or before, and your only options were like Rode and Audio-Technica and, and cheaper AKG mics, I found a lot of uses for those, but vocals were just not my favorite. Nowhere close to what this new landscape of mics is offering. So if you're just getting started out, just know you've got some really, really great options here right around that $1,500 price range that I think are going to really blow you away. And especially if you've been using something like a Slate VMS or, you know, one of the software emulations, which I, I did on for a while and I've tried, I really encourage you to try one of these analog clones and see if it's not a, a step above. I think it is, but of course, try everything out on your own and see what you think. So just to bring things full circle here, congrats to Josh and everybody at STAM. Like I said, I, I did that original review a few years ago. It's actually older than the post date because I got locked out of my old channel and had to start from scratch, but that's a, a story for another time. Every concern, every criticism I had there has been more than answered. This is a, a world-class mic. Just wanted to get this out quickly because, like I said, these are in stock right now. If you go to stamaudio.com, you can pick one up. If you do, let me know what you think once you get it. All right, if you got value out of this video, I don't have anything to sell you. I don't have a list that I'm asking you to join, but there is a little heart right below the video that says thanks. If this video was helpful for you, I just ask that you click that heart and send a little something to help the channel grow. All right, guys, I will be back soon with the review of the Chandler RS124. So thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Your faith was strong, but you needed proof.